Radio Grade 11s, in this episode 6 of your PAT discussion, I'm going to be zooming in on the last four drawings that you will need to complete. And they are on page 11 under 5.1.1 to 5.2. Okay, let's have a look. The first one asks that you complete the floor plan, which also must show the position of the cement deck. All right, that's your next big drawing that you're going to be doing. Then 5.1 talks about a sectional elevation that goes up to the ceiling height, but not including the ceiling. The section must include the detail of an external door and a window. Then you have one elevation that you need to do, which must be the front view of your clubhouse. And then before we get to 5.2, you need to make sure that the following is included in all of the relevant drawings. If it's necessary, your sanitary, which is your baths, um, showers, your basins, etc. All permanent fixtures, built-in cupboards, etc. Detailed layout of your kitchen must be included. Layout of the first aid room, as well as detail of the ramp, which is uh, an important one. All labels, notes and fixture codes. And here, of course, it's going to be important for you to add the room designations, the floor coverings, floor areas. Your scale must be included on each drawing. Dimensions, enough, sufficient for a contractor to build these, uh, the building. So really, all the dimensions required here. The cutting plane is required. All hatching detail and the north point. And then in 5.2, where they request a detailed two-point perspective, um, you need to make sure that that two-point perspective that you're going to draw shows a view of the clubhouse, okay, which is going to include, of course, your stage area. And then this one here, critical, ladies and gentlemen, the horizon line should be placed at 1.8 meters above the ground line. In other words, this must be a scale drawing. That's the only way that you're going to determine that 1.8 meters. I'm going to show you a practical example in a moment um, in order to have a human eye view. Okay, and then the last thing they say on the two-point perspective is that evidence of the following must be included to the drawing, all view drawings used to produce the drawing, the construction method used to produce the drawing. So your two-point perspective can't fall out of the roof. It must be actually shown how you've drawn that, and I'll show you that in a moment. All right, then a copy of this perspective drawing, just a photocopy, is going to go on the front cover and must then be used for the cover of your pad portfolio. So this is important drawing for aesthetics. All right, and then you're gonna wrap it up, of course, on your own, doing your cover page index, etc. Let's look at the checklist. If we go down here to your 5.1.1, where it details your layout drawing. This is the actual mark sheet that your teacher will also use to, of course, mark your pad task. So at your floor plan, which will be 5.1.1, does it correlate with a selected free end solution, which you already determined in the previous video, I think video four, I showed you how to do that, and the selection process. So if yours correlate, you're gonna get a two out of two. Did you include all the internal and external walls? If you've done that, you've drawn them correct, the correct sizing, two out of two. All doors correctly drawn according to suns, all windows with its window sills, etc. two out of two. All permanent fixtures, that's um, of course all your lighting fixtures, all your built-in cupboards, your sanitary fixtures. Do you have all of them in all the rooms? Yes, two out of two. A detailed layout of the kitchen and the serving area. If you've done both of them and it's done correctly, again, two out of two. Then your title of your floor plan, the labels, as I said, in the different rooms, etc. Any notes that you have to explain maybe yourselves better and your dimensions, that's all going to be up to four marks available hatching detail for your walls did you do that correctly did you insert your cutting plane all of that gives you another four and did you use the correct scale uh, and is that indicated correctly of course that's going to give you another two all of that's added together divided by 20 and going to give you a 10 out of 10 mark all right that's the floor plan let's look at your sectional elevation Okay, on your sectional elevation, it's our section correct according to the indicated cutting plane. So the cutting plane, of course, on the floor plan, does that correspond with the actual view that you've drawn? Again, two out of two. Did you indicate the foundation, the slab, the wall detail? Okay, natural ground levels, your 
damper of course, etc. Indicated two out of two. Your de door detail is that correct? Your window detail, each one of them is two. Labels and notes, again two. Suitable scale, one out of one dimensions, two. All hatching details, and this can be done freehand, that's another two. Divide that by the 15, you get 10 out of 10. The elevation that they require, which is your front view, Again, make sure you get the correct view here. They want to see a full front view, so you want to see there at least that deck as well. Um, that's two marks. External walls, other external features, including your finished full level. That's again two out of two. Door and window detail, and the view drawer to same scale as the floor plan, two out of two. That's the easy one. Definitely, you're going to nail that one. And then the last one. The actual perspective drawing showing the main entrance to the building. Okay, that must be captured in your two-point perspective. Do you have evidence of the views, drawings, and construction method used for the drawing? That's one mark. Correct orientation showing the front and the correct horizontal line height for a human eye view. That's two. And then the actual drawing, that's going to be seven. So there's a lot of marks in that actual drawing to get to your 10 out of 10. Okay, and let me show you some examples here. We're going to start ourselves off with the actual floor plan. This, is, of course, is a previous year's work of one of my students. And you can see here, we've got the concrete deck. We've got detailed layout of the storage rooms, the kitchen, the serving area, the bathroom area, the lockers, right? We've got a disabled toilet, the guys' bathrooms and lockers, um, the entrance, We've got our first aid room here. We've got the uh, gathering area. We've got our stacking doors indicated. All electrical fittings is indicated. The window detail, the door detail, the roof line. All measurements correctly done. Remember your measurements always on the top of the line when it's horizontal. When it's vertical, always to the left of the uh, measurements. Even if it's on the left, it's always on the left. Same this side. All right. All of this, that's your floor plan. This first drawing must be added to a complete civil title block, of course, and neatly framed. All right, that is your floor plan. Let's look at your sectional elevation. This was a full sectional elevation, including that ramp that they referred to. You've got your window and your door details, the serving area. We've got full details on our foundations. Again, another ramp. We've got our gutters. We've got a roof detail here. And I think you're, you're fortunate that they haven't asked for your roof detail because you're still grade 11. So yours will stop here at your ceiling height. So you can ignore this. Um, this child's gone so far as to add a bit more detail in with measurements for his foundations. And then indicated, of course, the actual title and the section, north arrow scale. All right. Radio, so let's look at the actual elevation. They have to do two, of course. You're just going to have to do one. Uh, there's a two that this specific child did. The north elevation. There's a part of that deck. And then the east elevation in this sense. All right. So this would be the kind of view. With you. you have your main entrance here. You're going to have your deck with its roof. You've got your roof with its um, ridge plates. You've got... Um, your fascias, you've got your gutters, your downpipes, you have your ramps with um, the finished floor level indicated, you've got your window sills, windows, window openings, door frames, and then on the outside, uh, your sewer in connection to your sewer line, and this is more grade 12, but if you do have bathrooms on this wall, you can add these pipes in, uh, downpipes with the inspection eye, the rotting eye, to the manhole with a fall of 1 to 40, add some heights onto it, um, and there's, of course, the other view. Of course, you just have to do one view there. And any notes that you might have, you can add onto that drawing. And this is the real one that I think to a lot of you um, will be a good challenge to have. Here's the tip. All right. This one was done to scale 1 to 200 to make sure that this fits in um, on an A3 drawing. All right. So let's just have a look at it. He's placed his top view here. All right with your picture plane running, and this is drawn to scale. So the actual horizon line is placed at 1.8 meters above the ground line. Okay, that's where the 1.8 comes in. And you can see here that it is in line with the actual doorway where you would actually enter at eye height. All right, that's a very easy way of double checking that your horizon line is at the correct height. He's added for himself here two views to enable him to draw even a much more detailed and better
perspective. And on this perspective, you can see the main entrance, you can see the deck with the roof. Really a quality drawing. It doesn't come easy. I would really suggest that you do a rough on a separate page, get your spacings correctly, get your views orientated. And initially you can just do the outlines here, okay, to get yourself the best chance of just making sure you get your actual outlines ready. Right, and then you can go add in as much detail as you want. I'm going to quickly show you the blow up of this. Right here, so here it is. That's the enlargement that was placed on the actual front page at the end. As you can see, there's quite a lot of detail. But this is similar to what you're going to do once you've wrapped it up. Okay, that's a quick overview of a couple of drawings for your practical assessment task grade 11. Now it's your turn.